Welcome back to another roundtable. My name is Adam. I have Rusmin with Hello. me and Victor. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to talk about Tencent. So uh, there was one roundtable we did really recently where we were talking about Alibaba. Yeah. Yep. And you know why China is cheap at this point. And we mentioned another Hong Kong stock as well. Uh, in those comments, someone's a few people were asking about Tencent, which is the other big company in China, and whether you know what the value of Tencent is, how his business business is going. So I thought we'd give an update about Tencent, and how how's it going? All yeah. Right. Okay. So Tencent uh, is my favorite company. Okay. Right? So let's talk about it uh, because they own this particular app called Weixing in China, right? So if you live in China, I've been to China, you know that you can't live without. Wasting. Okay. All right. Yeah. Some people say that they can live without Apple or iPhones in China, but they cannot live without uh, wasting in China. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then I tell you why, because wa- wasting itself is a very powerful app. It's an app. There are a lot of apps within the app itself. Okay. In the I think wasting you can do your payment. Okay, and you can do your instant messaging, which is what we all used with WhatsApp. Mm-hmm. So in China, they use uh, wasting to do that. Right. And of course, they also uh, can use social media like your our Facebook, uh, but it's just that they, they they call it moments, right? Where you can scroll and then you see the feeds of what your friends are up to, okay. right? And now, uh, you know, with uh, and uh, with the short form video like TikTok, right? In China, they have this uh, towing, right, which is very popular over there. Uh, Weixing managed to create this thing called Tencent channel, right? And this is where their short form video and it's getting a lot very, very popular also mm. within the apps itself, right? And of course you can, uh, if you're heading out for work, right, you can call for uh, TT, right? Mm-hmm. Which is your Uber in China. Uh, and you can do almost everything, watch videos or uh, everything. It's a super, super app. Yeah. It's a super app, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and that's what Elon Musk is trying to build, right? X model of the Tencent what they okay. have successfully there my idea would be like how about if we just copy WeChat and yeah, because right. I think it's a super app right it's like ev- everything in your daily life right, it becomes very very sticky mm. in, uh, yeah. in China especially the messaging mm-hmm. right if you most people we tend to message right so that is a uh, like you always will go back to the app so it makes yeah. the user uh, in, uh, how say uh, the usage very long right? it's a habit yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah. and even like if you go out right you definitely have to spend the money right mm. and WeChat Pay is very popular yeah. there uh, and the other player will be your uh, Alipay yeah correct yeah I think both of them are dual poly dual poly so I got the 2022 December market share figure right so Alipay is about 54.5% market share uh, Tencent Pay is about 28.8%. Uh, sorry, 38.8%. Okay. The rest is like 6.7%. So dual poly. Kind of like Visa and MasterCard yep, in correct. China. In that e- sense. Yes, yeah. yeah. And they also have Tencent Music, which is your Spotify mm. in China. And of course, they also have uh, shopping where you can just buy your e commerce stuff on uh, Taobao or maybe even Pintodo. Or, uh, you can do your food delivery, uh, like your Meituan. Mm-hmm. So it's a very, very powerful app. That's why I see Weixing as an operating system mm. of smartphone in China. So this is why you like Tencent so much. Yeah, because okay. in, 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 in US or even in Singapore, I can't live without Google. But in China, if I'm Chinese, I can't live without I, the thing is, I don't know if, <laughs> if an American company can do this. Because the moment a company becomes so big, so powerful, Antitrust, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's different in China. Yeah, yeah it's different <laughs> in China. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So this is why I think Tencent. Um, it's very powerful there, and of course, they are not just the app itself. They also have gaming bu- business, which is one of their core business, long time ago. Mm-hmm. But today, still account a quite substantial amount of revenue. To, uh, about I think thirty percent if you combine both domestic game and international game, right? So just to quickly run through some of the games that they own, uh, primarily in mobile games. I know you don't like mobile games. <laughs> well, trash. I play some mobile games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you look at the mobile games by revenue, twenty twenty two. I don't like twenty twenty uh, twenty twenty three actually. Uh, and the top mobile games are your Honors of King. Uh, in Chinese, what do you call it? Rongyao. 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 Yeah. So that is actually probably popular. Okay. I and mean, it's the top grossing uh, games worldwide. Mm. All right, this is the highest 1.5 billion, you know. And they have, they have uh, and that actually belongs to Tencent. Uh, they developed the game themselves and uh, PUBG, right, which they have franchised it. All right, so they also own this brand. And they also, the third uh, highest uh, 
gross gaming mobile games revenue is also uh, Candy Crush, okay, which is owned by Activision Blizzard. We did this episode when uh, Microsoft acquired Activision Blizzard, right? And yeah. they actually acquire they own Activision Blizzard before the acquisition. So Tencent also. So if you look at the top five, I think they actually dominate a lot of them, right? So I think they are a big gaming company, not just in China but also internationally. Okay, right. Yep. So yeah. And I think they are they are they are spread with for them with the second player is very wide. Okay. I think the second player yeah. in China is net net east. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very wide. And because they are so big, right? So every time when the foreign player they want to come into uh the gaming player want to come into China, right, they will definitely choose Tencent. As the because, platform. Yeah, because okay. they already have the distribution yeah. network, okay. right? So for instance, uh I think around early last year, Meta wants to enter the VR market in in China, so they partner with Tencent mm. because yeah. immediately you go Tencent, you access to China already. Mm-hmm. Why do yeah. you want to go and build yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. even uh, Roblox, the top five gaming uh, by revenue, right, mobile games by revenue, also partner with them in China. Okay, to expand the Roblox. All right, so this is actually very popular amongst uh, kids. Okay, right? and of course they also have like PUBG, which they own crap under the company called Crafton and Fortnite also. Mm-hmm. They also own it under Epicenter, and okay. of course your Clash of Clans. So they are very powerful in the gaming market, very big, I would say. Right, uh, and yeah, so that that those division, I think if you were to look at how they report their revenue by segment, um. They break it down the gaming side, which is twenty one percent come from the domestic games, and then which is China, and then uh, international games contribute about nine percent. Right, so gaming alone contribute thirty percent, and then they do have uh, revenue coming from the online advertising, which are uh, like on your like moments, right, where your feeds you can actually insert ads, you can load the inventory there. Right, so those uh, and also including their ten cent channel, which is their short form mm-hmm. format, where they also building out a lot of inventories over there. So that segment account about 70% of their revenue. Right? And then they do have a uh, value added services from social networks where people actually pay, subscribe to 10 cent videos to watch those premium content mm-hmm. or sports. Okay. Right? And they also uh, have paid for it. And that actually account about 19%. And the other 33% come from their WeChat pay and also their 10 cent cloud and many, many other businesses, which I don't think I can go through all of them because it's huge company. Right. It's, it's company. almost like a, it's like a social media player, a payment processor. Yeah. Uh, you know Spotify po- Spotify video and, video. Their, and their music is profitable yeah. the business yeah. so it's basically almost everything so uh, it's a very it's ingrained in you know Chinese life. in the lifestyle yeah, yeah. Uh, so what, how would you value uh, Tencent um, I mean because yeah. we, we, we mentioned Alibaba was undervalued yeah. so is Tencent how is it valued at this time yeah so I talk about the business because it's yeah. always important to understand the business yeah. first and a lot of the business are cash generating business mm. so the best way to look at them would be uh, earnings mm-hmm. uh, and they do have a lot of other investment which of course they want you to value them based on their book value right okay. so let's talk about the earnings power first right so if you look at their result I think over the last uh, 10 years Right, so they have been growing rapidly, right? Only until twenty twenty two, the revenue slowed down, uh, largely because of the the all the antitrust uh, regulation that hit them, mm-hmm. Alibaba, Nikon, all of them got fined during the China tech crack crackdown. Right, so it was a very intense moment in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. So that was a huge and bigger slowdown, and that caused a lot of uh, companies, tech companies in China, actually crash, right? And yeah, so earnings also have hit all time low in 2022, but then it has since recovered in 2022. Okay, so they do report the underlying uh, earning per share, okay. which they base it on. They do have a figure called non gap or uh, non IRS um, uh, figure for the earning, which they adjust for those uh, fair value gains or losses, uh, basically non cash items. Right. And then they also uh, adjusted for the share based compensation, right, which that one I at the back okay. because I think these are real expenses right so I comes out to a figure where I think the non IRS adjusted figure is about uh, $15.20 a share Hong Kong dollar so it's earnings per share yeah that's adjusted. earnings per share yeah. adjusted right and if you based on their average P that they've traded after the derating I think they are trading at a average about 30 times in the past they used to trade as high as 50 times right, mm. 40 times right? but now let's base on the 30 times Right, so if you base on that, I think you'll come up with the intrinsic value about close to four hundred fifty six dollars. Mm. Okay, so this is on the conservative level because I, I back the share base compensation. 
and they also do have the, a lot of investments so like they have stakes in reddit which we just discussed uh, mm-hmm. last week all right so they are one of the biggest beneficiary there they also have stake in tesla pintoto right and gojek supercell activision blizzard which they've sold to microsoft right and yeah so they have a huge portfolio investment and that portfolio as of 31st december 2023 they are is worth about 150 hong kong dollars per share so if you add up that will gives you um close about 600 mm. right intrinsic value if you add on those investment but i think it is safe to say that they are worth probably around 450 to 550 so you're just being dollars. conservative here based on the core business it's about 450, 450 yeah. yeah and the and all these investments you didn't even account that into the share price. yes yeah but you can okay. give you a range of let's say some investment worth something you know, which yeah. they are given out all right mm. they're giving out a lot of share like meituan jd mm. and yeah so they are doing it more uh, so i think i will put their average intrinsic value at about somewhere 500 okay right, so let's say if your range of 450 to 550 so it's worth at least 500 mm. for this okay stock. and at the point of this yeah. recording it's about 300 plus Hong Kong dollars around there, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's still some margin of safety. So uh, you would say that Tencent at this point is undervalued. Yeah. It's still yeah. undervalued. It's still, it's still undervalued. Like and they Alibaba. double their share buyback recently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the most interesting about the company is that they, unlike Alibaba, which have not even recovered back to their previous high in terms of earnings, uh, mm-hmm. they have way exceeded their underlying uh, earning per share, right, which is based on the adjusted uh, non, uh, non-IRS figure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they are about 26% higher as compared to their EPS in 2020, which is wow. one of the highest. And then 2021, they started to drop. 2022, they also dropped again because of the, the huge, strong headwinds. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that time, a lot of China tech crackdown, China slowdown, COVID lockdown, mm-hmm. right? So all this happened at that time, right? So and then 2023 was a strong rebound. Mm. But market don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they actually if grow. This happened in the U.S. market. The share yeah. Really go up really. yeah, I think yeah. I think the, the, the news in the U.S. moves a lot faster. Yeah, yeah. it's different in China. So they are at a record high uh, revenue, record high profit, mm. but the shares still undervalued. The shares are still undervalued. The valuation <laughs> multiples are still depressed. Okay, yeah. people still think that the whole China yeah. tax are trash and they okay. even double up <laughs> and they are de- even double up their share by back okay. like I said just now yeah right? and right. they yeah talking about the dividend uh, and um, the buybacks I think they have been increasing the dividend by almost 50% and they're going to upsize their buyback by twice the amount wow. okay. they did so yeah. I think the last three years we have seen the largest buyback that Tencent has ever bought and yeah. now they upsize it even more yeah, okay. which is good because the shares are undervalued yeah. when they do a lot of buybacks because yeah. this business is cash cow right it's just mm. churning a lot of cash it's just like Alibaba yeah. right? and they have a lot of uh, a lot of growth catalyst that's happening all at the same time right so they have their games were suspended in 2021 right and then 2022 and then 2023 they started to resume all the game approval and these new games as they launch it that will become the catalyst for them but of course recently um late last year mm-hmm. there was a news rumor saying that a lot of the government will want to implement the game gaming spend uh cap they okay. want to implement a cap on the people who are spending money on game yeah i was going to ask you about that so the thing about <laughs> tencent is that it's yeah. it's very clear it's, it's a dominant player yep. fundamentals are, are great financials are great yeah and it's undervalued so in most cases people go yeah this is a, a great you know a stock to consider yeah but then like you said this um gaming cap user spend cap thing is a, another piece of bad news that come it comes up again yeah and then it basically Yep. depresses everyone it's like, oh not again is like is there another yeah, 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 regulatory yeah, yeah. Okay. you know crackdown on, on Tencent or, or whatever it is yeah and then what would you say to that because there's some people who were like just oh that's it enough I don't want to yeah. I don't deal with I, think, I, I think it's basically like antitrust right yeah. it's yeah. just in that the sense, antitrust yeah. is in the US is much slower okay but in China it's like almost immediate I mean yeah I guess yeah. so because yeah. now Apple is facing an antitrust yeah. investigation at this point in time it's everywhere well. yeah it's everywhere yeah. it's just that in 2021-2022 I think the Chinese tech have immense pressure where you mm. that was also the year where we saw edutech being damaged yeah, right? I mean that's one great example because for people who invested in edutech it's basically gone gone yeah that 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 is scary yep because yeah. it's basically just one industry just wiped out for the greater good right according to the to the chinese government yeah um but that's as an investor that's very very scary so i think that really shook the confidence of a lot of investors i think the, many many investors. <laughs> the, the, the government can yeah. do, do these type of things got it, got it. so but, so what are the risks that you, you know see tencent facing yeah so for tencent risk that regulation it's has been at play the risk has been i think at play since 2021 2022 
and then everyone thought it was over in 2023 yeah. and then late, late last year 2023 yeah. that's where the suddenly <laughs> one joker come out and say one government official in China so yeah. come out and say they're going to implement this yeah. and then the next moment of course the guy gets sacked okay. Okay? and <laughs> then uh, yeah so the government has actually been trying to convince private investors to come back you know and they officially came out and said that tech regulation in China is over. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there will still be some small little regulation here and there, but it won't be like your fines, billion dollars of fines mm -hmm. across the board, okay. right? Because they have since uh, tidied up all the mess, right, that, that have happened in this whole sector. So, but then that may happen again because uh, regulation may really come back in again mm -hmm. at play, maybe sometime down the road. So that's something that you need to be aware. Okay. Because uh, right now, okay, in the past, why they keep on cracking down or suspending the game's approval in 2018 uh, and also 2021 and 2022, that was largely because um, there are some state media says that, you know, gaming is a, spiritual opium yeah <laughs> those were the moments i still remember was so intense a game mm -hmm. a lot of gaming stock were heavily sold down mm -hmm. right because opium is a very strong it's word. a drug it's a drug yeah, yeah it's yeah. addiction right so um that sector gaming sector can be quite tricky right, mm -hmm. as we move forward but it's not only worth 30 percent of revenue when in the past you were saying it's a bit yeah higher, right? i think 21 percent now if you just account china side yeah. because international oh, yeah, that market is, that is true you don't really have that issue right mm -hmm. no one see it as a spiritual opium <laughs> so far <laughs> yeah. uh, but i think now they try not to do it right they have actually resumed the games a lot of games with batches batches of games have been approved right including mm -hmm. tencent games over time right and now i think uh tech regulation in china is way behind us i think it's since 2013 uh, 2023 Mm -hmm. But 2023 was affected the whole China macro slowdown because mm -hmm. of the country garden crisis. Uh, people were just upset that the whole China was state had been depressed for almost three years. Mm -hmm. But it's a very long bear market, and they all get out and yeah, they they have given up okay. on China. That's why the whole sector across China the valuation is so depressed. Okay. Yeah. So uh, even my Tencent is underwater. Okay. Still underwater. <laughs> it's underwater. But you're right? still holding on to it's it. Still holding on to you, it. You, you like the company. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the fundamentals are strong. It's recurring mm. well, and the catalysts are very obvious now uh, because their their biggest catalyst right now is their Tencent channel, which is their short form videos. Mm -hmm. Now they are starting to uh, monetize it, and that monetization is happening very quickly because uh, they, they they are very conservative. They don't put on a lot of ads at one go. They actually focus a lot on users. Uh, experience. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to load up with a lot of ads. But based on their stats, they say they are way significantly below the monetization rate as compared to your uh, Kuai Shou, even Douyin in China. Okay. Yeah, so that is one avenue where it's going to grow very, very quickly. And of course, they have new games coming up that launch and that will drive their gaming division. Mm -hmm. And they also have mini games, right, within the app itself. And then I think so far they are hitting four, 500 million daily active users mm -hmm. using the mini apps. And mini games will have more people people play on the WeChat racing app itself and that will introduce more traffic um, mm. as, do as dollar and also the gaming dollars and, and all these are high margin business. So basically moving forward, I think in 2024, 2025, we will see 10 cent margin will continue to expand. Now their operating margin have way exceeded their peak in 2020. Right, so now it's actually at all time high. So that after all the regulation, yeah, mm -hmm. and okay. they are basically driving a lot of quality growth. They are bas they are basically saying that you know we are going to continue to expand the margin. Okay, yeah. So a lot of fees that they record are net basis, so that will flow straight into yep. the bottom line. Yeah, I think yeah. the 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 positive type, positive side that you want to see is that if you look at the regulatory history, because I think regulatory history the regulatory is quite new to the foreign investor yeah but to asian investor uh china has been regulating throughout right because in only recent years that the the chinese company lives in the us and alibaba is one of the big names and everybody see the regulation and all this but if the good thing is when you look at the history of the regulation uh for instance like 08 they regulate the milk i think 2012 or, or 13 they regulate the pharmaceutical industry then they regulate the corruption which uh, after the multi sales will drop Right. Other than corruption, right? Most of the other industry that they regulate, after they regulate, right, they they did not go back and regulate yeah. again. Right? Okay. The, so that's yeah. what's the track record. So, so what, far. that's your your observation of what's Yes, correct. So uh, except okay. for corruption, uh, corruption okay. always have to once in a while go back. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. The reason why regulate is to basically to build uh, sustainable long term growth. Okay. Right. So that's why they have to go in because in the past there was a lot of uh, Tencent, Alibaba. 
Douyin, they all have a wall garden, right? You you cannot share Douyin link in Weixing. Mm. They blocked. Yeah, it's it's stupid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, in 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 the US or even in Singapore, it's like open, right? Everyone yeah. can compete equally. But in China, it was a wall garden, and the government had to come in and step in and look. You guys are doing stupid thing. Mm. So you get fined yeah. for breaching anti-monopoly <laughs> trust, right? Okay. So there's there's the warning to them, and now they are starting to collaborate. Yeah. Okay. Which will yeah. open up the market. And size, the good yeah. thing is, a lot of the companies that was regulated in the past, the industry, the pharmaceutical, the the milk, the uh, multi and all this, right? During the regulation part, they really dropped more than fifty percent mm-hmm. in terms of the yeah. share price. Okay. But after that, the next ten years, they are like multi bagger. Okay. <laughs> after the industry is clean up. You yeah. know, I mean, you always make a point where it's, the news is the worst. It's yeah, probably the correct. best time to have a look. Tell at. me, what's the re- the biggest regulation twenty years ago? You can't remember. Uh, twenty years ago, I can't remember. You can't remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. I don't remember what I was doing yeah. twenty years ago. <laughs> I mean, eventually people will forget, right? Okay. I mean, this is an emotional thing, okay. right? And uh, because now the news is so current, it always flash, especially in the Western media. Mm-hmm. So it becomes, uh very say that oh there's no freedom there's the government is involved in the capitalism and all this but but chinese market they have always been doing this this right it's a, they just different country just operate differently we okay. have to really accept that right? yeah i guess wherever you invest you have to be comfortable with that yeah landscape yeah. over there yeah. Yeah. yeah any other risk that you see for Tencent? i think the other risk would be us and china relation right so mm. that seems not to be going anywhere it's just getting worse over time and of course you have uh, i mean the us elections mm-hmm. still ongoing uh trump may get elected again and then they, he launched another trade war okay. with china and yeah so that will affect a lot of those import export companies yeah and then after that they're going to try to ban tiktok and all this in the u.s so mm-hmm. you yeah. further the tension and all this yeah right. so i mean if they ban tiktok in the u.s i think that one doesn't really affect them but they might ban wechat which they used yeah. to uh, suggest it but wechat anyway their international uh, audience are not significant okay. to them and uh, i mean wechat if i look at it i don't use it here because mm. it's not powerful okay. at all but in china it's different yeah yes. it's very right. different right yeah. Um, so I'm not worried about you know uh, US bo- blocking WeChat, right? Because that segment I think is not contributing in any significant way, right? And but US may sanction China, mm-hmm. right? Worst case scenario, like what happened to Russia when mm-hmm. they attacked Ukraine, right? And and by the way, interesting just to sidetrack, Russia also blocked WeChat. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So even though they are friend, <laughs> frenemies, <laughs> because the thing when it comes to communication is very sensitive, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so, so you see U.S. China tensions as another potential potential risk, risk because okay. now they derive nine percent of their revenue outside of China, which is their international market. Okay, so that portion I think will be under stress at the moment when there's a sanction. Worst case scenario, I think all the stock will hit. Even U.S. stocks, the Apple, Starbucks, we have a huge exposure there. Yeah. You get hit. So I think the economy is U.S. and China is too intertwined, mm-hmm. and I don't think that will come but it may come okay yeah so that's a risk that i want to highlight all right so we just wanted to summarize basically these are the risks that you need to be aware of tencent in your opinion is still a great company yeah but again no recommendation to buy or sell anything um and you need to do your due diligence what your risk profile is whether you're yeah. comfortable investing with whatever it is out there uh, but i just want to share some comments from our last china video on alibaba so some people naturally just um, just don't believe in China. So I want to share some comments with you and see what you think about them. So this is from this comment. Uh, I'm going to just read it out. So he's saying, things work differently in a communist state like China. The PRC doesn't follow the rules. They make them. Uh, so good companies can continue to suffer because of it. What do you think about that? Uh, which country don't make rules? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Every but country I mean, makes yeah, their own rules. Make rules right? yeah. so CCP have their own rules. US have their own rules. Singapore have their own rules. Yeah, it's just different way of governing the country. I think mm-hmm. ultimately, at the end of the day, they want the best for their citizen. Okay. I, I yeah. think the thing is, you have to really see the country, right? I mean, uh, China itself is very different from the US. Mm-hmm. So you cannot use the US Framework. model to yeah. go and uh, okay. manage China, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a very different thing. It's same, you also don't use the US model and manage Singapore. It's okay. very different, right? And if US were to use Singapore model to to manage the US, then it's going to be a lot of problem, right? Okay. So it's different country. Like I said, different country got their different system to run. Yeah. We just agree to disagree, that's I, all. Right? I think the best way to put it, you don't want to invest based on how the 
country run their government system. Uh, mm-hmm. But maybe some people do it that way. Right. But I think what we should be focusing on is on the company, the okay. fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, because Tencent has survived under that structure and they continue to thrive. Okay. Right. So it works well for them. Right. Okay. They, 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 what works for them, it works for them. Okay. Yeah. So here's another comment. The emperor needs to step down before there's any light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so um, I think the next emperor is also going to be CCP, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, going to be the same structure, same issue. So, like I said, if you are not comfortable with China, uh, the way they govern the country, mm-hmm. which some people see it as a threat, uh, I think stay out of it. Because yeah. the best way to manage the risk is if you're not comfortable with the risk, if it's something that keeps you keeping you awake at night, stay out of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's interesting, is. is uh, if you look at the way they they govern the the country, but yet the past ten or twenty years GDP growth of them is no, but you could argue is, that it's yeah. because from a lower base, yeah. and then there's growth, you know, from a, to a middle class economy. But you can yeah. see that a lot of their middle, their poor yeah. people really get out of poverty yeah, yeah, and go true. into middle you, class. You, you know? It's easier to go from a yeah, you know, a lower base to to there. Uh, there's another comment here. So, if the foreign funds, I mean, this is comment is more balanced. So, if the foreign funds are still leaving and China economy is still bad, I don't know what to expect next. It's cheap, but fundamentals and sentiments are really bad. China has to rebuild confidence that they have stable and investment friendly policies. What do you think? Yeah, I think they they have been trying to do that, right? Okay. They've been talking to meeting uh, CEOs from um, outside of China. Uh, they've been coming out introducing policies mm. to 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 convince private investors to come back but I think people are still not buying to the story uh, there's no large stimulus given out in China um, so to me is this is a bear market the worst one of the worst bear market that we're going through right now and that's why it's foreign funds are pulling out right so this is something where I think uh, one of the consider one of the best time to actually look at it because uh, you have such a great company that trading below P multiples of 20 times mm-hmm. right so it, it should be worth at least 30 to 40s uh, okay. based on their growth engine that they have yeah okay. I think the, the the view for the foreign fund I think mostly the markets are depressed because of the foreign funds okay it's not because of the Chinese citizen themselves thinking that the the regulatory is, is good or bad right but the if you were to look at the Chinese market right that the Chinese market and the Hong Kong market right there's some shares that are dual listed in the China China stock exchange and also in uh, the Hong Hong Kong H share. Okay, so example, let's say if you look at uh, Ping An Insurance, right? It was also sort of like got the crisis and all this, but the view from the Chinese market is that uh, uh, it's tend to be more better than as compared to the Hong Kong one because you can see in terms of the share price. Usually, right, the H share and the A shares are uh, they they trade in tandem. Uh, sorry, in tandem, mm-hmm. right? But then you look right now, right. The, there's a big gap between the H share and and the A share, but yet they are the same company. Okay. Yeah. So the 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 H share is trading at a cheaper valuation as compared to the the A share. It's not only on PR insurance. There's on other that is dual listed. They are also having the same thing mm-hmm. right now. So 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 I basically, in the Hong Kong market, is actually just the foreign investors that are leaving, but the 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 Chinese industry, the Chinese investors are not thinking the same, right? Yeah. I read somewhere that seventy percent of foreign fund has been out. Mm-hmm. Right, so that kind of like okay, that's one yeah. of the best time. Okay, yeah. yeah okay, so, so that's your opinion yeah. on on China. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's, it's best companies. You don't yeah. basically buy any. Company. I mean, you already at the. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we went. I wouldn't say it's like bottom bottom or something, right? Yeah. But you already at the worst sentiments of the the time, right? I think so it, yeah. So any good news, any what, will just switch in terms of the sentiment. Like in the past few videos that we have been talking about the Chinese, uh market right you say that the foreign investor won't come back that does not make sense because in 2022 every all the foreign investor runs away from the hong kong market but in 2023 starting mm-hmm. uh when when the news all subsides mm-hmm. the foreign investor all came in and the market just went up okay. it's just that when the same news came back again they run out again okay. so this does not justify saying that the foreign investor won't come back yeah right? i think the biggest risk come back to this is i think the largest shareholder has been selling down 10 cent share uh Nespers. Mm-hmm. Right, because they they themselves are listed, uh, and their shares are heavily discounted uh, against yeah. the NAV. So what they are doing is they basically unlocking some of the investment, like Tencent is one of them, and then they take the money and buy back the share from the open market, which is going to be a very good move for the shareholders for Nespers, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that sells that that sales of share of Tencent share has been quite uh, a lot. Okay, 
so so far, I think seven hundred million have been sold, mm. right? Over the last uh, four, they've been selling down since twenty nineteen, and they announced it publicly. Uh, but that selling pressure may cause the price to depress, right? Okay. For a while, and because now they still own about twenty five percent stake, which is huge. Okay. Yeah. And I will just share one more last comment, which I thought was interesting. But take this one with a pinch of salt. So this person is saying, if you observed the latest headline from Bloomberg, you know that China share will rally. Bloomberg, for the first time in many years, is positive for China stock market, <laughs> meaning okay. all the big fund houses have already bought in. <laughs> 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 this, is what, this is what this guy thinks. <laughs> so take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, I don't yeah. know how this things, all these things work. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I basically, no uh, yeah, just all these are really interesting comments. Uh, and I just wanted to share them with you because I think uh, China is a pretty interesting discussion. Yep. Both sides of the, you know, um, you know, both sides of the table, I would say. So, is there anything else you want to share about China at this point in time? Um, I think, uh, I don't know. Just, uh, I you just, just diversify your portfolio if you're interested in China. Yeah. Don't, don't like, yeah. don't like all in and all this, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I think that's a pretty good. I just want to give you an update about Tencent. You know, its valuation, how it's performing, because, like, you know, something something could be cheap, but then because its fundamentals are not so good. Yeah. But in this case, Tencent is still doing very well. Yes. They have a lot of catalysts. And it's still, yeah. it's still undervalued. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then you need to weigh it with, you know, the risk of investing in China if you're yes, comfortable right. with that, yeah. and what your you know, proportion of portfolio is going to be. Again, we're condition please do your due, res- uh, due diligence and your research and i think that's pretty much it right yep. guys yeah all right so my name is adam rosemary thank you so much for yeah. sharing and of course victor thank you. Uh, you know thank you for watching this round table if you lit you know, like this round table please hit the like button it really helps us in our videos and of course subscribe to our channel many more round tables coming up and we'll see you again